Welcome to Lincoln City, Oregon, where we're going to be spending the next few days showing you everything you need to know about vacationing here, especially during spring break. Our accommodations for the next few evenings would be at the Anchor Inn Resort. Um, you did good? Yeah, you did good. Located right off of Highway 101 in Lincoln City, this beautiful resort offers so many amenities, including a pizza parlor and bar that opens after five, but more on that later. Snacks. Coffee. Check out this hallway. How cool is this? I think these probably come to life at night. It definitely has like ghost ship vibes or like haunted mansion vibes, huh? Got movies. Got movies? Nice. Are you <laughs> looking for Top Gun? <laughs> <laughs> we made it. This is our humble abode. It's a little bit small, but it's gonna work just perfectly. This was the highest rated place with the best price. So far. I wish the toilet situation was a little bit better, but so far I'm thinking like a 9 out of 10. The rooms were cozy and clean and definitely had that northwest coastal vibe. <laughs> Got the shower, bathroom here, master. See, we got a little sink in here. Even came complete with a s'mores kit for the fire outside. That's awesome. In the courtyard of the resort, you've got a lot of fire pits and outdoors activities, but also an amenities room. The amenities room. That's so cool. More movies wow. and coffee. This place is the best. Well, it's pretty cool anyway. Ice. We've got a putt putt over here. This is cool. Got my little coffee. <laughs> like that they have a lot of help yourself stuff. They're like, we don't want to deal with you. So you just help yourself, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> All right, so it's not like a putt-putt, it's like a croquet putt-putt, which is still really cool. Look how green everything is. Not like the stupid desert we live in. What do you want to do now? A few moments later. Here we are at one of our favorite restaurants here in Lincoln City. It's called Kylo's and it's right on the water. You can see what a beautiful day on the beach it is down there. I think after dinner we're gonna have to go for a little walk on the beach. In hindsight, I should have went for a very, very long walk after dinner because, well, I overate. And you'll understand why once you see the food. What are you getting? I'm thinking I'll order clam chowder and the wedge salad, and then if you order that, I could have a bite of that and you can have Oop, a bite of How do I say that? I, I, I don't know. know. What are you getting? Dungeness Crab Linguini? Dungeness Crab Linguini. These are Dungeness Crab Cakes and some of the best fries in the world. It's lovely. They're dialed. Kylo's, man. Never had a bad meal here. It's chill, it's family oriented, and the food is absolutely delicious. The clam chowder along with the fresh baked French bread is probably some of the best I've ever had. Bread is so good. And the clam chowder. Creamy and amazing. It's probably like one of the best chowders I've ever had. Yeah. Do you love it too? Bacon and blue cheese, avocado wedge salad, and look at that, fresh jicama. 
Dungeness crab linguine cooked to perfection, freshly grated parmesan, little morsels of sauteed broccoli, and this one. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce this again because I got it wrong in the first place, but let me tell you, it's good. Really good. Really, really, really good. That's so good. That's so good. Did I mention that it was good? It's good. Sticking with the trend of things, everything was amazing there at Kylo's. You're ready to pay for it, but it's good. It's really good, and the view is spectacular. One of the more popular things to do while you're here in Lincoln City is to look for glass floats. Glass floats were used on fishing nets in Japan to help suspend them in the water. And they are just that, they're made of glass and they look like a big bubble. Occasionally, when the tides change and the winds shift, they end up on the shores here in America. And although they used to be pretty prevalent, they're very hard to find now, enter glass blowers of Oregon. They make their own glass floats and they place them here on the beach actually gonna be 200 in the next couple weeks. Like, I think we did the math, it's about seven a day. So hopefully we can find one. We haven't had luck yet. We'll see. I think we're gonna make our way back to the room and probably do some s'mores around a campfire. Pretty good way to end the evening, huh? Yes. This place is awesome. Seems I really awesome. like it. I like this place because they, they really took time to do some personal touches to make it special. Like little s'mores boxes, like fire pit areas. Some really nice touches here, especially at night. Very whimsical, dreamy. I love it. Campfire vibes. The boys occupied. They even have a bar that opened up inside. Yeah, we'll have to check that out some point. I might unload the bike and try and get some drone shots of sunset. But at the very least get it unloaded. <laughs> I kind of miss the sunset. There's some clouds on the horizon that the sun set behind before it was supposed to. So I'm late to the party. I'm not gonna launch the drone. Uh, this is a great lookout spot, but also there's not beach access from here. There's a spot with some stairs over there that I could ride the bike down. Couldn't get it back up probably. So gonna have to find a different beach access tomorrow that we can walk to from the room. But until then, I decided to check out the little bar and pizza parlor located in the lobby. And with a hot drink, I wandered the courtyard, which was eerily quiet for a spring break. But perfectly quiet for a spring break, if you know what I mean. Relaxation mode was in full effect. And with that, it was time to turn it in for the night. Day two here in Lincoln City, Oregon, where we woke up to some rain, kind of spoiled the beach day. It's not uncommon here. Expect it to rain. It's gonna stop around three o'clock and it's gonna get sunny and then we'll go to the beach. My mom always taught me not to throw axes inside, but today that's exactly what we're gonna do. And it's a perfect day to do it because it's pretty rainy this morning. So let's go over to the outlet mall, do a little shopping, throw some axes inside. The outlet malls are a great place to walk around and kill some time do a little spring break shopping, or pick up a few things that you left behind. And then there's this place. All right, here it is, one of my favorite stores in the universe. It has beer, it has axes, it has men's clothing, leather goods. It's one of my favorites. Let's go check it out. Scout Northwest Trading Co. started when an ex-Harley builder, his wife, and a good friend of theirs decided that they wanted to go into business doing graphic design and screen printing. Years later, they opened up this shop, and it sells a little bit more than just screen printed t-shirts. I actually got one of those last time we were here. Love that knife, love it. Knives and backpacks. If you're ever short for a gift idea for me, knives and backpacks. Fancy salts, I don't think these were here last time. There's an overwhelming amount of cool stuff in this little shop. Well, it's not really that little actually. It's fairly large, and it's not just a shop either. It's kind of like a place that you can just go and hang out sit down with a beer, throw a couple blades into the wall, and just chill. And 
why wouldn't there be a really cool rat rod just sitting in the middle of the store leaking oil and a surfboard in the back? I mean, of course there's a surfboard in the back. We're on the coast. He's right behind me, isn't he? You have died of dysentery. That brings back some memories. They've even got some really cool Giyotaku artwork and clothing to buy. I made it out of there with one of the octopus shirts. If you're not familiar with how it's done, they basically... Put ink on them, and then he makes prints. That's exactly right. They put a bunch of ink on the fish, and then they put it on a piece of paper, and they transfer it. Simple as that, right? It's time to get serious here. <laughs> Never a good idea to throw a hatchet sober. Remember that, kids? That was fun. Definitely highly recommend. Just so much fun to throw asses inside. I don't know, I can't explain it. Anyway, where are we headed next? Hey, shop. shop. Right. If outlet store shopping isn't your thing, don't worry. There's a lot of antique stores here in Lincoln City too. And they're not very little, they are big antique stores. Seriously, you could get lost in one of these things for days. I'm not entirely sure why the Pacific Northwest is such a magnet for antiques, but there's definitely not a shortage. Whoa, look at the size of those glass floats. Yeah. That's crazy. It's got more holes on it. There's some more up here. Oh, it has barnacles on it. Oh yeah, little baby barnacles, huh? Look at that. Like Olympics. <laughs> Enough shopping. Let's go find us a glass float. Oh, we gotta go over there. A little bit of driftwood. A little bit of driftwood. It's okay. Probably not gonna be a glass ball in here. This would be a great place to hide one. Look how blue the water is. Look at the boat. Yeah, it's my boat. Sweet. Beach hut. Nice. Oh, we're going in. This is the part where it falls down on top of me. <laughs> hey, what's the password? Wingland clam chowder. The red or the white? Oh, the white! That's wrong. You're supposed to say I can never remember that. <laughs> Katie was just up messing around on the logs over there. Came across this really cool seashell. And then Abel noticed that something was inside of it. You hear that? She dumped it out and there inside it was a little agate. Oh no, I think I just dropped it, or it got stuck. No, nope, it got stuck. Okay, it's still in there. Woo, that was close. Check this out. If you're not familiar with what an agate is, it's a type of rock, kind of like a, it's hard to explain. It's kind of like a crystal, kind of like an opal. They're usually clear. I'll try and get a better shot of this in a minute. That's really cool. So someone probably found that and hid it in the shell, would be my guess. One of our favorite things to do when we go to Crescent City, which we'll be in in a few days, is to actually go to a beach, a very particular beach, and to look for these little agates. And um, well, she found the first one in the trip, so that's pretty awesome. Hopefully there's more to come. Sorry we didn't find a float, guys. All right, well that was a nice little hike. Didn't find a glass float, but the trip's not over, and I might have a little surprise in store for us tomorrow. The sun's coming out. It's time to hike back to the room, get ready for dinner, and while they're doing that, 
I might take the bike down here and try and get some drone footage. It's beautiful now, the sun is out. Just like I said, rain in the morning, sun in the afternoon, and repeat. decided to take full advantage of our accommodations at the Anchor Inn Resort. We fired up some of the fire pits and got a bite to eat from the kitchen bar. This caprese salad was delicious and so was the pizza. Highly recommend. looking for a night out on the town, you pretty much have to come to the Chinook Winds. It, it's W-I-N-D-S, not W-I-N-S. Unless you're really lucky. Roulette table is closed for the evening, and that's kind of my game, so, uh, crap. Crap, crabs, crap, crabs it is. The last time I was here, we paid for the trip. This time, not so much. The next morning, we got up a little bit early to get a head start on the day, and we stopped in at what I would consider one of the town's staples when it comes to breakfast, Otis Cafe. Like a little creamer, it's so cute. Otis Cafe is a good old fashioned greasy spoon family diner but with a modern twist and a few things on the menu that you will not find anywhere else. The German potatoes, got like sauteed onions, Tillamook cheddar, which Tillamook is just right down the road from here. The food is good, it is country style, home cooking. They got fresh baked bread. Black molasses bread. It's really good. It's important that we eat a balanced meal because right after this, we're gonna be blowing some glass. You got the chicken fried steak? Mm -hmm. You can have some. It's huge. It was good. Try my Beautiful If you're showing up during spring break or on a weekend, any weekend, make sure you show up early because there is limited seating and the place is very popular. And the parking lot's very small too. Those are good. <laughs> we timed that perfectly. That was a fight to get out of there. There were so many people standing in the entry. <laughs> Well, we weren't able to find our own glass float, so we came to the Lincoln City Glass Center to make our own. Everything is so pretty just looking in the window. Ah! We're gonna spend some money. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Yeah? Don't touch anything. <laughs> no! Oh, we're we're right there. Looks like a weird alien planet. We're making a look ball. At the crowd. Okay. Look at the look at the octopus. Oh my goodness, these are amazing. Look at that cute little polka dot frog. Wow. So we can only make one glass ball, but can we make like a little? Even if 
you don't plan on blowing any glass yourself, it truly is an amazing place to visit just to see some of the craftsmanship that goes into this artwork. I'm getting super pumped to do this. This has been something that's on my bucket list for a long time. With an open bay format, the sea breeze just kind of floats right in. I couldn't think of a better place to do this. Ah, it's our turn, here we go. <laughs> and with multiple instructors and multiple kilns fired up, finally, it was our turn. Each color is made by cooking. The instructors thoroughly explain every step of the process and what all the things are, how they react to the fire, and how to stay safe while you're doing it. For these colors. Wow. Yeah. There's all of that clear glass. Hole, eh? Here the instructors dipping into the glass kiln and acquiring what will eventually become our glass float. These kilns operate right around 1600 degrees and contain right around 300 pounds of molten glass. Wow. A little less than 300 Check out how much it really drips and moves Whoa. when it's up at temperature like this. Crazy. Now when you're handling the metal, if you're wondering about the trippy sunglasses, I can assure you they're not just some sort of hippie fashion trend that glass blowers like to wear. They actually help protect the artist's eyes from harmful UV rays produced when the glass comes to temperature. And the first move is to roll the glass along the surface of the I'm gonna hand this off to you if you wanna keep on rolling. Then we can dip it back into the furnace in a little bit and add a lot more over the top. Wow. And we can tell when it's ready because it won't drip or move it. So it's a check. Lift it up off the table and stop turning. Then we're going to be reheating the glass next by adding a bunch of material over the top. And when we come out, we're going to meet over by those white buckets to shake it up. All right. This should have the surface of the glass nice and hot now. We're going to do a couple of the waves together first, um, and then you can do the rest on your own. So grab onto the tweezers here with me. And the technique is to very gently twist and release the pressure. Oh, want to try some more? There you go. How about some more? Stepping on this pedal, opens up the airflow, and we're watching for a little bubble to push out of the tip of the metal pipe there. See it? Yep. Whoa. And as that bubble continues to grow, we'll shape parts of it with the metal. So grab on in, we're going to gently lift up, straightening and kind of cooling down this area near the pipe. And then I'll add a little more air, puffing it up a little more bit more heat and then we're going to blow it up to the cool. full size. Hopefully not literally blow <laughs> As it gets thinner, the glass will heat up a lot faster. So you really start to dance down again. Here it comes. Woo! Hook on the airline again. And we're going to use the jacks. You want to grab the handle with me there. <laughs> Is it tight? <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and do a gentle pinch there, lightly carving in where the bottom's gonna go, and then as we carve that in, I'll start adding little bursts of air. Cooling the bottom with the jacks, adding some more air. We need to create kind of a brittle spot where the jacks are touching here, the blades are. Touching. And then to finish this up, we're gonna work at the station in the corner. Please head over to the right side of that metal table. All right. You'll need this little bag to help release it from the pipe. What I'll ask you to do is give the metal pipe a gentle tap right there on your back. Go ahead. 
I'll bring some for this one. You're welcome to set the bat there on the table. I'll be right with you. So cool. Look at that. You're a murder camera. Oh, seriously. It's I know. It's hot. It's hot. And the float's still around 1,000 degrees. This can fuse right onto it without causing it to crack. Whoa. Then we're going to put the Oregon Coast stamp oh, on cool. the bottom. Oh, uh, cool. To apply the stamp, push down lightly on the top of the wood handle. There you go. Push down light and hold. And then I'm going to shape the edges of the foot. And then we're going to flatten the bottom, lift up, and then push down one more time and lift up, and that gives it a nice base to stand on. We'll also mark it with a little letter stamp. This is the same letter that's on your yellow ticket. It helps us match up the right pieces on the kill. It's going to go in here where it's 900 degrees. Ooh, yeah, you could definitely feel that. That's a little warm in there, huh? And that allows it to cool slow. Slowly cool, yeah. exactly. Before it starts to cool, it'll stay up at 900 degrees all throughout the day while we load it. Great job, you guys. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right, how would you rate it? Zero to 10. 10 being the best thing you've ever done, zero being the absolute worst. 20. 20. <laughs> it was so fun. Better so than fun. the helicopter ride in Hawaii. Ooh, was it better than a helicopter ride? I'm saying it's about equal. It's gonna, equal. It's gonna last longer. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay, well, uh, let's go check out. They have another gallery across the street here, and then um, maybe just hoof it to somewhere to eat. We're just exploring today, doing a little exploring. This is our first time here at Moe's Seafood and Chowder, but we've heard that it's a town staple. It's kind of just really relaxed, chill vibes. The almost, are good. yeah, beautiful views. Almost cafeteria feel to it though. It's Super our first time, uh, so just okay. casual, and uh, we've heard that they've got great seafood and chowder, so that's why we're here. Beautiful views. How's that onion ring? The onion rings are hot. They're all right. The clam chowder, not great. Uh, and then it's kind of cold. Mediocre clam chowder. It's not very hot. At all. It's actually kind of cold. The fish is good. Big bonus points. Malt vinegar. You've got to have it with fish and chips. Fish tastes pretty good. It may or may not have been previously frozen, but it's not bad. The fries are pretty good too. So the fish and chips so far are the best thing we've eaten here. I will say that we got out of here for a pretty reasonable price. We paid $41. Abel gives it 6 out of 10. He really enjoyed the fish and chips. The fish and chips were pretty good. Other stuff was okay. Well, our three days here in Lincoln City have gone by extremely fast. Today we're gonna to be headed south on Highway 101 in some of the most beautiful country in the Pacific Northwest. We're heading south to Crescent City. We're gonna show you the restaurants, the beaches, and the redwoods. I'm tired. It's gonna be good. And uh, the drive is gonna be gorgeous. We're gonna be driving right on the coast pretty much the whole way. So it'll be really fun. I'm tired. It was gonna take a nap in the car. Me too. <laughs> We'll see you guys in Crescent City. But first, before we check out of town, we gotta stop by the glass shop and pick up our glass float. Oh, I can't wait to see. Whoa! Nice. Oh, dude, the waves are cool. Uh, we got our initial wow. Oregon Coast. I can't see. Oh, and it says 2024. That's cool. Yeah. It's cool, man. All right, on the road. See you guys in Crescent City. It's always a sad day when you have to leave Lincoln City. It sincerely is one of our favorite places on the coast. We hope that you've had a chance to visit. If you have, we also hope that you found a glass float on the beach. And if you did, we could sure use some tips on where to look. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And we will see you on the next adventure.